Hi, I'm Mo from It's Still New to Us, damn it. We have some technical issues in this episode, so I apologize for that. We could not stabilize the mic, so you're going to hear some scuffling noises. Um, we'll try to do better in the next episode. Sorry about that again. Please enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Mo, and I'm the strongest man in the world. And I'm TJ, and in high school, my nickname was Hoop Dreams. And this is... It's still new to us, damn it! A show where we watch every movie ever made to get girls to talk to us at parties. That's right. Yes, and this week... We got Clifford. Not the big ride dog variety, no. but Clifford, the 10-year-old boy, played by Martin Short. No, he's dead. The, the Clifford dog, he's dead. He's probably dead by That's now. sad to hear. Yeah. I, I, just, I thought I just saw a commercial for, uh, for his a movie. No, really, they, put him, they have like multiple dogs, and they put each one down every take. That's, that's uh, Milo and Otis levels of sad. Yeah. Really Terrible. Well, oh, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I didn't do anything all weekend, um, mm-hmm. so I'm feeling great. I mean, I want to be a writer, but didn't write anything. Doing so nothing is wonderful. Doing nothing is good. It's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. I forgot to take my medication this weekend, so that's not fun. Ooh. But, yeah. If I had a slide whistle, I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I see how my depression is feeling after this. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm sure that this movie will make it better. It did, a little bit. So, as Mo alluded to, our movie for this week is Clifford from 1994. Starring, uh, directed by Paul Flaherty, and starring Martin Short, Charles Grodin, and Mary Steenburgen. Mm-hmm. You know what uh, Paul Flaherty directed? No, actually, his name sounds familiar. Yeah, uh, he. Martin. No, it's like someone really old. I think his name was Buck Gregory Buck. Peck. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. Wait, That's, really? Okay, no. <laughs> I was gonna say okay. Yeah, was... No, but he worked a lot with Martin Short. He directed CTV, Martin Glick. Mm. Now, okay, Martin Short was not in the TV show Maniac Mansion, based on the video game, but. He also wrote a lot of episodes of Maniac Mansion. Was Maniac before. Mansion a George Lucas thing, or am I making that up? I don't know. I don't know a lot about Maniac Mansion. I just know it was a video game, and then it became a Ooh, TV Ooh, we series. can add that to the list. Yeah. Is that a movie? It's a movie, right? No, it's a series. Just, oh, never mind. Yeah. 65 episodes it lasted. That's that that impressive. That was a cartoon. It's impressive, yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It was also written by J.D. Rock and Bobby Von Hayes. Do you know who those people are, TJ? Yes, but the audience doesn't, so explain to them. Okay. So those are fake names. Let's talk down to them. Yeah, yeah, of course they are. Oh, the fake names. Yes. Because the people who wrote this movie were too ashamed when they saw it to put them Ah, together. the Alan Smithy uh, yeah, routine. I gotcha. Exactly. Very Your good. names are William Porter and and uh, Stephen Campman. Oh, they can run, but they can't hide. Both wrote Back to School and a movie called Stealing Home, which I have no idea mm, what's I've seen uh, Back to School is good with Rodney yeah. Dangerfield. Exactly, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good movie. Yeah. Excellent. Um. Well, we will get into this one. I do have a synopsis if you're ready for it. Uh, well, let's see. I got some facts, too. Okay, as you I'll said, go fuck myself. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. It's my show. Martin Short was in Three Migos and Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. Ah, <laughs> classic. Classic, yes. Classic uh, staple Gordon, Christmas movie. Yes. Charles Gordon, of course, was in Midnight Run. Great movie. Amazing. Yeah. And it's tall, a movie we covered. Not great movie. <laughs> no. Mary Steen version... Virgin? No, Virgin. Bergen, Virgin, Bergen. I don't know. Ted Danson. Mrs. Ted Danson, yeah. <laughs> yeah Mrs. Ted there Danson was in a movie called Melvin and Howard, which is a movie she got nominated for, I believe, Academy Award or Globe and Globe. Mm. And did you hear about the Morgans? Yeah. Yeah. I was debating the whether to put, like, you know those movies where, like, old people go on adventures or something? Or, like, they got their groove back or something? She was in like a lot of those. I was waiting to put those on there, but <laughs> yeah, she's done a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, she was in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and she was in Step uh, Step Brothers. Yeah, um, she's been a, a lot ton of, of stuff. Yeah, and most importantly, playing herself in Curb Your Enthusiasm. And also, Dabney Coleman. Dabney Coleman was in this movie from Nine to Five and the movie The Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, great! Yeah. A movie I've also never seen, so yeah. that will eventually have to be watched. Yeah. Do you know the tagline of this movie, TJ? No. What's the difference between Clifford and a pit bull? What's that? One will tear your heart out, scare your friends, and wreck your house. The other one is a dog. <laughs> that that's cool. accurate, yeah. That's, that's accurate. Cool. Definitely. By the way, I should note we have two Kirby Enthusiasm alums in this show in this movie. We do? Because uh what's his face who plays cousin oh, Andy? Yeah, Richard Kind. Richard Kind, yep. Yeah. How come he didn't call? How come he didn't call me? <laughs> oh, he's so good in that show. I know. So but good. anyway, we should probably talk about this movie. Yeah, we probably should. Yeah. Okay, let's give you a synopsis, TJ. Let's go. Yeah, I can go now? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. okay. The year is 2050, and the human race is being pushed to the brink of extinction by roaming android death squads and a global food shortage. 
Meanwhile, however, an aging Catholic school priest named Clifford Daniels recalls his mischievous misdeeds as a 10-year-old boy to a troubled student. When Clifford's parents, who are on a business trip to Hawaii, leave him under the care of his Uncle Martin in L.A., Clifford and his toy dinosaur, dinosaur friend Stefan do everything possible to manipulate their way into a trip to Dinosaur Land, an amusement park his Uncle Martin had a hand in designing. Throughout the week, Clifford's manic and childish behavior hinges on psychopathy as he wrecks his uncle's house, frames him for domestic terrorism, and nearly destroys his relationship with Sarah Davis, Martin's fiance. In the end, Martin snaps and sets out to destroy his nephew, whom he now believes is simply pure evil. Hilarity ensues. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically it. That's basically it. I, I, I may have uh, taken some creative liberties with the yeah. roaming android death I don't squads. remember like in any of the movie where it said roaming death squads in it. I don't remember that. Yeah, they, so this movie was made by Orion. Yeah. And it, frankly, it could have been the movie that put them out of business. But this was made by Orion. And what they did, I think you may have been up using the bathroom when the movie started. But the first scene, they just stole from one of their other movies, Terminator, yeah. when they show the future with all the human skulls and the androids stepping on them. Yeah. That that was the first scene of this movie. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, I definitely missed that. Yeah, it was yeah. good. You missed it, it. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Pay better attention. <laughs> <laughs> I will next time. I won't use the bathroom the whole time. I was holding my pee. <laughs> So the big, the big thing, the big draw, I guess, of this movie is that it is about a mischievous child, which was the style at the time. Yeah. Uh, but it's not played by a child. <laughs> yeah. I was looking this up. Martin Short was 37 years old when he played young. Because they shot the movie because they had to hold back the movie because of budget reasons. Because mm-hmm. the Lion films are going through troubles. Yeah. So they filmed the movie, I think, in 91 when he was 37. And when he's all young, and then they shot the movie again in '94. That's when the when he was the priest, so he was 40. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. True. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Martin Short in this movie. Sure. Okay, he does definitely not look like a 10 year old. Let's just agree with that. But he doesn't. I say he's more realistic than Ben Platt was in Dear Evan Hansen, the movie that just came out, <laughs> where he looks just just awful, just terrible. Sure. Let's see. Let's see if I can find a photo real quick. I don't know. I'm talking. While you do that, let me just say that <laughs> while obviously this movie has been this movie has been very much trashed throughout the years. Roger Ebert Definitely. and Gene Siskel named it on one of their you know worst movies of the year. Oh man! And they even I think went as far as to say that Martin Short playing a ten year old he just looked creepy. And to me, that's just the point. This is my favorite. I actually looked up the review for this. They yeah. Give, they give it a half star. Well, Eva did. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, Eva did. So Eva said, quote, I felt a little glow as the opening titles rolled up for Clifford. Martin Short, Charles Gord- Gordon, Gordon? Charles Rodin, Gordon, yep. Mary Steenburgen, Dabney Coleman. Funny people. Even the technical credits were promising. John A. Alonzo, great cameraman, Pembroke Herring, skilled editor. I settled in for some laughs and waited and waited. In the screening of some 150 people, Two people laughed, one a piece. <laughs> the other some, 148, did not laugh at all. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I love I love Roger Ebert's oh, old man. reviews because he can just slam people. He can, and he's very good at yeah, it. Yeah, there's very some good criticism. At it. He did not like horror movies at all. Mostly, he mostly just slammed a lot of. Them. You want a good laugh? Go watch his their reviews of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Yeah. It's amazing, and they yeah. are so funny. Um, listen, I don't like to be if you know. We're not. I wouldn't say that we're film critics so much as we no. are film and you know, movie enjoyers, right? Yeah. These guys, their job was to watch every single thing that comes out, yeah. which eventually we will do. Mm-hmm. But once you've seen, I don't know, the Lawrence of Arabia's and Kramer versus Kramer's of the world, you see something like this, and yeah, and from an objective level, it's not a good movie. No. But hanging out with your friend and having some beers or something. If it's on the, if it's streaming, and Ebert is right. I mean, the cast is the strength of this movie. Oh yeah, definitely like the positive. I mean, Martin Short and Go- and Charles Gordon have a great chemistry. Spoiler alert: I didn't dislike this movie at all. Actually, I didn't like love it, but I didn't no, hate it. No, me neither. It's Same. Not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I've I mean, Martin seen Short. Martin Short is a great comedic, like physical comedic actor. Every time right. he gets hit or gets thrown, it's hilarious. Like yes. in the beginning. When Ben Savage, who is also in this movie, yeah, he's a little right. child, he gets 
Ben Stiffers throws himself out the window and just lands on Martin Short. That's hilarious. I mean, that loud. <laughs> it was good, yeah. yeah. And when, uh, when he is getting hit by the... When, with, but, with the with the purse of the mom who he she switched places with to go to mm-hmm. Dino World, that's hilarious, too, because you see his facial expressions. So, right. Yeah. His facial expressions are the strength of this character, too. Yeah. Like you mentioned uh, earlier when we, when we watched it first, um, his uncle's telling him, just please, just please be like a normal human boy and he contorts his face in this way that's so non-human and it's just it's something only martin short can pull off and i think that martin short probably is especially in this movie an acquired taste you have to be in on the joke with this movie yeah i mean you could definitely make this into like a horror movie style trailer like you do for like a lot of movies (laughs) right yeah you got it do you know how they got it to look like that how he looked like short all the whole time uh yeah, I did did read this on IMDb. Yeah, so he, they're usually standing on boxes like the co-stars or next to slightly oversized props so right. to make them look smaller than the actually is. Right. Yeah. It's it's one of those. I don't know. This movie is, it's unique. It's one in it's a million. Got some, hits, got some hits, got some misses. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, it's not. It's not worth the uh, infamy of the of type of movie that bankrupts a studio. Yeah. Uh, the credit score on Rotten Tomatoes for it was 13%. Yikes. Yeah. Audience score, though, 67%. See? that's And that's why I take Rotten Tomatoes with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, I follow it religiously. Do you? They are my true gods. I follow Rotten Tomatoes. Bad movies are bad movies. There's no say. <laughs> <laughs> the almighty critics. Arnie's opinions do not matter. <laughs> almighty critics tell me what to believe and I yeah. shall believe it. 59% bad. 60% good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah, there's a fine line there. It's a fine line. Um, so yeah, I like, love the new Star Wars because it had 95% Rotten oh Tomato score. Oh my god, seriously. Not the Last Jedi, the one before that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mentioned in the synopsis that Clifford obviously makes life difficult for his uncle. Basically, he at the start, he even forces a plane to make an allerg- emergency landing in L.A. because he yeah. wants to go to this dinosaur world. Yeah. Um, I must admit, Witcher Kind... Well, Witcher Kind was only in this movie for a little bit, but it wasn't really that strong. Which lends to one of my biggest problem with this movie, but we'll get to that a little later. Yeah. What were we going to say about Richard Kind? Well, like, he... I watched the clip to... Because we watched this movie about a week ago, and I tried to catch up with, like, the plot of it and what was going on. And Witcher Kind had a joke where he made fun of a fat woman. It didn't really do great. It just sounded hateful. Because I think it was supposed to sound hateful, but I think it could have been funnier. This is one of those movies, I will say, that the tone doesn't know if it wants to be for kids or for adults. Yeah, I think this is was supposed to be a kids movie. I, I think it was. No idea. Well, yeah, it's got the so. PG rating, but it's kind of got. I think it's funnier if you're an adult. Yeah. In a way, it's one of those weird movies like a Small Soldiers, where it's like, who exactly is this being aimed yeah. at? It's a niche that type thing. You have to like Martin Short first yeah. and foremost, and you have to just be willing to go yeah. along with the joke of him playing a 10 year old he's a very physical presence as a comedian yeah. like you said and his delivery is great like uh there's when, when um martin Stewart convinces charles gordon to go to san francisco because he thinks that mary steen virgin's cheating on him with dabney coleman or dabney coleman's gonna pull something but really really uh clifford stays at home and then when when charles gordon gets home he's uh clifford's tied up in, in the room and he's like <laughs> Oh, <laughs> bikers came and they tied me up and they told me stories. Some of them were really cool, but then some of them were really scary. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, he throws the party at yeah. his uncle's house while he's yeah. gone. Yeah. Um, he call. He takes the uh, his uncle Martin's voicemail and transforms it into a bomb threat. Sends that to the yeah. police uh, and uh, gets his uncle arrested. Um, at a dinner party for Martin's fiance's uh, father, uh, he I feel like that could have been stronger. I feel like there was some funny parts in that, but I feel like they could have brought it up to like another ten. It could have been. They made the they made the dad who was played by the guy from who played the senator in Godfather Two and uh, one of the army colonels in Apocalypse Now. Um, they just made him an asshole for no good reason. Yeah. Um, so he ended up kind of being a non presence, but. Clifford switches Charles Grodin's Bloody Mary with pure Tabasco, which realistically wouldn't be that debilitating, would it? 
don't know. I feel bad with eat. I, I guess mean, so. I get really bad when I eat hot Cheetos. Yet I ate that uh, ghost pepper chip one time, and I was fine. <laughs> like I was like, okay, it was uh, it was hot, but it wasn't de- deadly. Like I wasn't fair. Fine. Fair. Yeah. Now, what do you think of? See, Charles Grodin to me is one of those actors. He can play the straight man or the and funny played, man. He played a great straight man. In this. I think he did. Yeah, too, he's yeah. the perfect. Well, I guess sanity to launch towards insanity. Mm-hmm. But I think the the main problem in this movie was mostly just it wasn't enough. I think you need yes. to take it up to a, like it, they took it up a little bit. Like you need to an eight or a seven. You need to take it up to a ten. Make yes. it even crazier. Make it even like insaner. Because like when, for example, like when Martin Short had this like coming to Jesus moment where he's about to die and like Charles Gordon saves him. It just kind of ended after that. It was just like like whatever, and they left, and then they. They got married, Charles Gordon. No married, consequences. No consequences. Yeah. Like, maybe something else. Like, you know, like, maybe maybe Clifford does go to San Francisco. And he sees and he sees Danny Coleman trying to hit on Mary Steen version. And he gets back at him for doing something. And then at the presentation, the presentation should have been the end. That's what I think it should have been. The presentation of, the, of the, the project that Charles Gordon is doing should have been the end of the movie when Danny Coleman's there and Clifford's... And then Clifford causes all this mayhem... But he's trying to help his uncle by standing up to his boss and embarrassing his boss and ruining like the true plans of the of the of the like railway system or something like that. Yeah, you that know. would have been good. Yeah. yeah, Groden, he was like uh what, a, a city planner? Yeah, something yeah. like that. He was yeah. he was, like making a railroad system. Yeah, and so when Clifford comes to stay with him, he says, Yeah, what the hell, I'll take you to Dinosaur World but then his boss, Dab uh, Dabney Coleman's character, demands that, you know, uh, no, I need you this product project done ASAP. So he has to, unfortunately, renege on his promise, and Clifford proceeds to destroy his life for, for doing <laughs> that. Um, yeah. I did think one funny joke is when you first meet Dabney Coleman's character. Uh, it show we see uh, Uncle Martin and his fiance Sarah with Clifford. This is like when they still are first meeting, and they don't know who he really, you know, his real self. And they're walking to meet Martin, their boss, played by Dabney Coleman, and they're joking about his hairpiece. And so when they meet with him, Mar- uh, uh, Clifford goes, "That's the bestest wig I've ever seen." <laughs> yeah, that was good. And and oh no no no, hey, that, that's not a wig. That's not a wig, Clifford. But you said it was. But you said it was. <laughs> and then when he's scolding him later, he, uh, when Martin's scolding Clifford later, Mar- uh, Clifford's like, you know, it was a compliment. I said it was the bestest wig. There, there were some funny ideas there. Um, but yes, my big problem with this, and you touched on it, was after the climactic end, if you want to call it that, I suppose it was, it just ends. There's no real epilogue. There, no. I mean, they show them getting married, but there's no resolution with Richard Kind or Jennifer Savage. You don't you see know. the growth part. That's the, there's no growth, right. I want to say this movie has a hero journey aspect to it, but that's like the one thing <laughs> of the hero journey. Like, you change right after, like, oh, after all the things that happened to you. Like, right. <laughs> And he didn't really change. Well, he did change, but we, cha- didn't, we, didn't, we see didn't see the see change. It, yeah. uh, and again, I'm not looking for Shakespeare, but yeah. but that would have been nice. That would have been helpful. It might have been nice to see Richard Kind with Charles Grodin, because there's not a scene with them together. They just are on the phone. Yeah, yeah. they're just on the phone at one point. Not sure. Probably not even recorded together. Yeah. Uh, but those are two comedic actors, and that would just be fun to yeah. see. Yeah, and that probably would have made the movie better. That probably would have made like, maybe like a half half star more or like two stars better. Mm-hmm. But this movie is still good on its own merit because Charles Grodin and and Martin Short ke- ke- chemistry is really great. So. It is good, and watching Clifford manipulate everybody is is really funny. Yeah. When his uncle comes to pick him up, he's put a sign up saying "I love my uncle Martin," <laughs> yeah. and he's pretending to sleep and like all you know childlike and adorable and. He manipulates Sarah, uh, Martin's fiance, and into thinking that uh, Martin's a bad guy, so that she'll break up with him and be with Clifford. It's yeah, it's weird, but yeah, definitely. I love one of my favorite li- one of my uh, one of good line was um, when uh, when Charles Gordon is touching Clifford's hair and it's like like Uncle Martin, like usually I would uh, seek vengeance on anybody who touches my hair like that. But for you, I love you. <laughs> It was good. Yeah. <laughs> Such a specific thing to say. Yeah. That was funny. Okay. So what was your favorite gag from the movie? Probably when Martin realizes after getting arrested and having to be in, you know, arrested from uh, the family event with his fiance's father and embarrassed, um, 
and he comes home and he plays it off as, oh, he was just co-workers playing a prank on me, but he knows <laughs> that it was Martin that sent in the bomb threat. Yeah. And he's talking to Sarah while Clifford's eating a big bowl of cereal, and every time she looks away, he, like, fucks with Clifford, and at one yeah. point, like, pushes his head <laughs> yeah, into this giant like... cereal bowl. I remember that. <laughs> that was a good scene. Yeah. Uh, the scene, like I mentioned, with the wig was good. The scene when uh, Clifford pretends that he was tied up by bikers was yeah. good. Um, and yeah, That's this whole movie. It's a lot of good scenes. It's not right. a lot of connection. That's not, a, not a narrative, I suppose, yeah. if you will. Exactly. Um, I would say say my favorite scene is um when after like him like uncle martin and clifford are sitting down and he's trying to figure out what like he's trying to convince clifford to tell the police what happened and he's saying like well, I, I didn't do it i didn't do anything and like because because <laughs> mary steamboat's and father hates you <laughs> right hates you and then then he uh then at the very end like uh, Uncle Martin was like, "Stack normal, act like a normal human being," and and then Martin Short does his great faces. Classic Martin okay. Short. Yeah. Um, I would say as well. I did. I did like the ending. I thought it. I just thought it was funny how Groden gets pushed to a limit where he's like, I need, I think he literally says, I need to destroy him. Yeah. <laughs> and so he takes him to Dinosaur World after hours, puts him on this ride, which I wrote in my notes is the most impractical roller coaster you'll, roller coaster you'll ever see. Yeah. It's this really, uh, you know, elaborate animatronic dinosaur ride, but the cart seats one person. Yeah. But he keeps, uh, anyway, he, he puts Clifford on that and makes him ride it and keeps increasing the speed until... The ride breaks and Clifford almost falls to his death. Yeah, with a what I would have done is like, like make it go fast, but like show Clifford just going through it like multiple times, you know? Because mm-hmm. he did it like three times and normal, like three times at like somewhat normal speed and then super fast. But I would have done like super fast and then see him do it like multiple times and then, then one time it just falls, it just fails. Yeah. Yeah. That probably would have been better. Because mm-hmm. yeah, like after, so you know Uncle Martin reluctantly saves Clifford's life and. More or less, the movie just ends from there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it really was a mixed bag for me. Um, yeah, like I said, some jokes worked, some jokes didn't. And other than that, though, like, it was fine. Like, even though Mary Steenburgen was basically just girl, that's basically it. She, I mean, she had one good moment when, like, she threw the she threw the, the wig of Daphne Coleman out the window. But besides yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, that's true. This really was a Martin, Sh- uh, Martin Short and uh, uh, Charles Grodin vehicle, as you said earlier. Yeah. Do you know he released four movies while this was still in production? No way. Yeah, since this was filmed in 91, he released, and it took a while to come out, he released four movies in between <laughs> Wow. Yeah. All right, then. How did this help his stock or hurt it at the time? Any idea? Not great. I mean, this movie was definitely considered, like you said, one of the worst movies of the year. Um, his other movies did not do great either. The only good one I could think of from not that time period, but like even in the 80s, it was Inner Space. Okay. <clears throat> Inner Space was great. Um, of course, The Three Amigos. Yes. That's and a good that's one. mostly it. I mean, I don't know. Like, I've, like I know Mark Short. I think Mark Short's hilarious, but I haven't seen like a lot of his stuff. I've never seen any of his CTV stuff. I've never seen Martin. Uh, Sorry, Jimmy Glick. So, Jimmy Glick. That's Jimmy the one Glick. I was telling you about. When he, the way he'd speak is high to low. But well, never mind. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know much of his work per se either. I like the Three Amigos quite a bit, mm-hmm. and overall, I like. He's just so unique, and he is, I think, in a lot of ways, a comedian's comedian. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Like, I think he's very much respected around the comedy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, MC Martin of Pals. I heard that. Right. Moon- Hulu show is doing great. Yeah, I heard that's really good. Yeah. I do mean to check that out. Yeah. And I adore Steve Martin, as I'm sure I've said on this podcast many times. Yeah. Um, I always find it funny, because I think that that's like a setup to a, a joke. Like, what if Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez had a TV show? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no yeah. kidding. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I'll definitely not maybe check that out one day. I have no idea, but... I loved him in the Arrested Development episode when he plays Uncle Jack, who's a paraplegic, and has a... Instead of being in a wheelchair because it makes him look weak, he has this big bodybuilder carry him around. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's like the bodybuilder's hard of hearing, so every time he wants something... 
I can't remember his name, but he yells, Lunge! And he's just <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. So, well, I guess we can go to our final thoughts. I mean, there's nothing sure. really a lot to say about this movie. It's kind of like a last movie where it's a... It's an okay movie. It's not as bad as people think it is. I mean... It's tricky to talk about because, like you said, it's just a bunch of scenes. Yeah. It's a bunch of... I wouldn't even say jokes as much as just scenes, situations with little narrative yeah, you know, driving yeah. force. Yeah. And if they would have kept that long... If the movie is like, maybe 15 or 20 minutes longer, I think it would have been better because you could have, like... Like, let those jokes hang longer or make new right. jokes. Like. Right. Like, one of the... Um, one of the... The, the biggest things that I was surprised that they missed on was Chekhov's gun, the Chekhov's gun rule, right? You introduce something in Act 1, it shows up in Act 3. Yeah. There's a big arc in the, uh, or attempted arc in the movie where Sarah Davis is worried that Uncle Martin can't, you know, settle down and have a family. He's showing her the new condo that he bought, and it's like right on the edge of this dangerous cliff oh, with yeah. jagged rocks and a bunch of shit right into the, some water and you're thinking oh my god somebody's gonna fall down there and die apparently and it's never brought up yeah, or shown never again. Up again i thought like i thought like that would be like the moment cliff would realize the change or something like he's, right like, he's doing something and then he falls off the house and he's like he's hanging from the i don't think right. that's the same house though no i don't no. think they have yeah yeah it looks way different though but they don't show him moving do they no so that's I think, weird. I think that's his old house still. So it is weird, actually. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, that that is bizarre. Yeah. But that would have see that would have at least made sense in a narrative way, I guess. Or yeah. that like if Groden saves him from that. Yeah. From falling to a, a horrible death on some jagged rocks. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, by the way, I've got to show you Ben Platt and uh, Dear Evan Hansen. Okay, so what do you think? Martin Short looks better. Or, uh, Ben Platt looks better. Martin Short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Martin Short for definitely. sure. He's very boyish in his features. Yeah, definitely. He is just very boyish. Definitely. Um, okay, well, I guess we should get to uh, final thoughts. Sure. Um, would I recommend this movie? I'll give it a, a yes. I mean, I think definitely this, like, watch the scenes that we think is funny. And I don't know, I think this movie you can just put on in the background and, like, or you're watching TV, you see it playing, you're like, okay, I'll just finish the rest of it not that bad i would give it like two stars definitely okay but would i recommend it yeah just okay. for the scenes yeah there's martin short and charles gordon's chemistry sure uh i would say i had three caveats for a recommend one you have to like martin short two you have to find it for free or very cheap to rent yeah we paid like four I bucks for it four dollars yeah <laughs> and uh three you have to be in on the joke yeah. You have to just n go into it knowing that it's not a great movie. It's not really even a good one. But just let yourself go. Hell, have a drink. Smoke weed if that's your thing. And you'll probably find something that you enjoy. It's only 90 minutes. It's not going to take up too much of your time. If you got nothing better to do in these cold winter months that are uh, coming up, give it a watch. Yeah. So, do we have a Red Buttons MVP for this? Or yeah, any trivia? I think this one is easy. It's got to go to Martin Short. It's yeah. got to go. I mean, it does. he made the whole movie. That does. No question. Yeah, just simple, plain, and easy. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that settles that. Okay. So, that was Clifford. That's our thoughts. It's now time for The Godfather Minute. I am trying to watch The Godfather one minute at a time because I'm Italian and people say I'm a bad Italian for not watching it. So, that's what. But I've tried to chose the worst way possible to watch it to piss people off, especially TJ. We don't say you're a bad Italian, by the way. We say you're just a bad person. Oh, really? Based on your numerous personality flaws. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's fine. You're just a That's fine. Total, total jerk. Okay, so minute two of The Godfather. Uh, Amerigo is still talking to Don Colon about his daughter and her boyfriend. And he's talking how the daughter, he gave the daughter freedom and everything like that. And the boyfriend took advantage of the daughter, beat her up. And now she's in the hospital. And that's, that's mostly it. I, it's that's really Because right. I was watching it, and I was like, I'll just do this quickly. Okay, these are, these are my notes. Gave daughter freedom. Boyfriend takes advantage of Amigo's daughter and breaks her nose. And that's it. Those are my notes. Bona sera. You haven't even heard the Don speak yet. No, I have not. So I gotta wait for that. You know, not only did you admit that this was stolen from a different podcast. Yeah. Allegedly. Not allegedly, but this is definitely you're not even going to... <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, at least we're upfront about it, okay? Yeah. We don't have to be original if we don't lie about it, right? Yeah, I think so. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, 
You're not you're not gonna enjoy these movies a minute at a time. I'm not. At least I know I watched them now, so <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Well, all right then. Uh I'm working on a game there you know, that's gonna be starting next episode. Perhaps a guess that actor or actress with trivia because uh the guy across from me can't stay the fuck off the IMDB pages well, and he I cheats do a every lot time. Of research for this podcast, so I gotta I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll do trivia about other famous movies, but it would be true. a surprise. Or we're going to talk about movies we've seen that like we don't do for the podcast. I always want to do something where we have to say something nice about a horrible movie or something terrible, bad about a great movie. Yeah, we can do that. That sounds know. actually good. We'll work on it. Yeah. Well, anyway, I guess we should figure out what we're going to be watching next time. Oh, yeah, the wheel. I forgot about that. We only have two left on it, correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's... um. It'll be Porky's or Midnight Cowboy? Yep. Let's see here. Let's hope it doesn't land on Clifford again. Let's see. We're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning! Dun, 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 dun. It's Midnight Cowboy! All right! You ready to see some dick? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a dick in that movie. I'm not sure, but... Hey, wasn't we'll it X-rated? It. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we're gonna see something. If I don't see a dick, I'm gonna be awful disappointed I demand to you. see John Voight's penis. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway... The um, penis that birthed Angel... Well, didn't birth Angelina no. Jolie, but helped uh, That'd be contribute to that. If you get birth to your dick. <laughs> that would be... Yeah. Yeah, women are tough, man. Definitely. Way tougher than us. Yeah, that's why they don't talk to us. I had a, kidney, a couple of kidney stones before, and those those suckers hurt. <laughs> you yeah. can edit this all out. No, we'll keep it in. <laughs> we'll keep it in. That's it. Even. Well, okay, I guess this is the podcast. Um, my name is Mo, and I'm still the strongest man in the world. And I'm TJ, and in high school they used to call me Touchdown Teej. Is that also true? Yes. Okay, we'll believe you. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody. Here's our fan, Robert Mitchum, telling us goodbye. <laughs>